Welcome to Sheepskin. So today, we're four weeks out from lambing. The yos are due a booster vaccination. They're due a fluke dose and they're due a mineral drench. So quite a bit of work to do today. I'll try and get as much as I can on camera. First job, mobile race is hooked on behind the lancers here. Get that set up now. And just like that, we're all set up. So next job, get these sheep gathered in. Uh, we'll have to cross the main road here. The help hasn't arrived yet. Saturday morning, there's something good in telly. Watching the news or something, but Robbie will be here soon. I hope. So the help has just landed here. He's kind of blocking the road here on one side. Uh, good lay in this morning, Robbie. No, 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 no lay in. What? Something good on the telly. No lay in. <laughs> <laughs> Pensioner now, of course, he needs his rest. Yeah. <laughs> now, so we're crossing the road here. To get into that pen, you'll see the sheep here behind me. Uh, so I have to bring them up through these bits that's grazed off. Fence is off, we'll not give you a doubt of it today. Now you've enough shock treatment in the last few days. Sheep are coming, the dog's bringing them up. We just have to be gentle with them now, they're heavily in lamb, so we don't want to give them too much abuse. Now I have the gate open here. Robbie's going to stand up this side on the road with the van half blocking the road. Come on, come on, I'll just see if I can call them out. Come on, come on, pop. Bring them on, bring them on. Up, up, up. Come on, up. Put them on, pops. Put them on. Good dog. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Not so bad. Oh. A well behaved Robbie. It's in handy now. Yeah. So we we'll just get set up and we we'll get ready to roll. Right. Still in good condition. I see some of them with wool pulled there. They've been scratching. They've been scratching on the branches and bits of trees and stuff in that field. I don't think it's scab, but it's one of them things, I think a lot of it's weather related. Can't be dipping them, I haven't dipped them now in a while. Well, I haven't dipped them this year at all, or last year I should say. But uh, there's a lady there now, very heavily in now. Well, big belly full of lamb. Right, we're going to fill the race and make a start. Come on, come on, come on. Now, we've all the oats in the pen. With the race filled. Robbie's going to keep them up to me. I'm going to do the vaccinating, so we're going with Heptavac P. This is the booster before lambing, so this will pass a bit of protection on to lambs for when they're born. Uh, we've a fluke dose to give as well. So we've gone a little bit over, they've gone uh, eight weeks since the last fluke dose. It's a little bit longer than I probably would normally leave them or should have left them, but the weather's been very dry, not much mud about. Doesn't seem to have done much harm. No casualties, no dead sheep, which is number one sign of fluke. Uh, and I have a mineral drench uh, that I had left over from before, and I'm going to give them that as well. So, three jobs to do. So, I'll make a bust and we'll rattle through them here. So this is a uh, fluke ivor or clonsantel is the active ingredient so i haven't used this this year so i use the three fluke doses generally a year so 
I use triclobenazole for the first dose. I use the Trodax, um, generic version of Trodax, nitroxinil. Uh, that was the other dose, and now we're going in with Clonsantil. So generally when I fluke dose, I try to alt alternate them. So I never use the same dose uh, two consecutive times, or even in the same year if I can avoid it. Uh, same with the lambs, I don't uh, use the same dose consecutively. Uh, I just find it's contributing to the resistance problem. So I always try and swap them over. So. This is, it's a pretty high volume dose. It's uh, 16 millilitres. Uh, I have them worked out about an 80 kilo yo. I always err on the side of caution. I would always go a little, a little bit more, especially in these drenches. I go generally a millilitre or two more. I know it's costing more, but you're much better overdose than underdose. The underdose you're contributing to that resistance problem again, so. Yeah. Come on, come on. You can get ready to go there, Robbie. I can stop them up here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah, no, we'll not have used them because they're so heavily in lamb. Just a wee job I like to do here when I'm uh, vaccinating, using this dose and gun, but every 20 or 30 sheep, or if if you happen to damage the needle, uh, we'd we'll say if you tip the needle off the side of the race, what happens is the point of it bends over. When you inject your sheep, it's extremely painful for the sheep. You'll see she does a big jump. So I like to change it fairly often. It's a cleaner injection then as well. You'll have less problems with it uh, lumping and giving trouble. So I um, change my needle uh, fairly often. So to just stick on a new needle. So I had a few people asking me about where I inject the sheep with a subcutaneous injection. So lots of people go around the ear, some people go around the neck, some people, look, it's personal choice. But I had some people asking me, this is how I do it, and this is why I do it if anybody's interested. So I aim for halfway down the sheep's back, aim for about the middle point. So I just part the wool, uh, just part the wool out. So you can see a bit of skin. You can see the bare skin there. Just line your needle up. Give the wool a little tug out. That pulls the skin out, pulls the fold of skin out. And you'll see the sheep is still fit to move forward and backwards. But I always point the needle backwards. And nine times out of the 10, the sheep will move forwards. And uh, that'll, avoid, that'll avoid you getting injected in the hand. Because it's not good stuff to get injected with. It makes your hand all swell up and nasty stuff. So. I'll just do these couple more here. Now, simple as that. Now this is the fluke dose. I always start at the front of the race because the sheep, as you try to catch them, they always want to go backwards. And as they go backwards, they're kind of pinning each other uh, back and the head should be up. So I always catch them under the chin. So I do try, I do try and stay outside a race. I don't like working in tight conditions with sheep. I find it very hard on the knees and the legs. It's tiring enough work without getting abuse, getting knocked around the place. So I do try and let the race itself do the catching, and the holding the sheep, and uh, it just saves the legs and the feet from getting hurt. Uh, so now I've, so that's the fluke dose done. I do have to change my backpack 
because they're too big five litre tins they're just too heavy to put in the one backpack so i'm swapping the backpack every time i have the jeep up here that's kind of acting as a as a workbench it's a bit slower but look it's working so just throw on the throw on the mineral drench backpack now and get this done so again this is a it's a high volume drench it's 20 mil i've only a 15 mil um syringe so i'm doubling up as two tens So generally when you work from the front back you'll see most of the sheep they don't like their head down stuck underneath another sheep so they all have their heads up and it's quite easy to catch them they're not able to move that much because all the pressure is coming back so look it's just that bit simpler it's easier on man and beast i think so with those no way here i'll just give you a look at the, the setup i'm using so the race i actually leave still connected onto the back of the jeep uh it's probably not ideal but it it keeps it up off it keeps it up off the ground a little bit more a little bit higher for working at the sheep are more they always want to travel up a hill it's very hard to get sheep into a race if they're going down a hill so that little bit of a rise up they're more inclined to keep moving forward and stay forward and by leaving it on the jeep as well the land cruiser opens the top door opens up top door opens up and the bottom door opens down so you have a little workbench there as well for the backpack and the needles and all the rest of the stuff so it's just nice to have a, a, a spot to leave things that you're not bending every time you're picking up swapping over from a vaccinator to a swapping the backpacks but look we're rattling through them nicely here we'll keep going we've only 30 odd left so we'll keep going so that's it last race here ready to let out we've all done I think we counted 167 here so we're just going to let these go and then we're going to get the main mob back across the road for the wear handy little device there for shedding particularly useful now if you're drafting i'll give you a look at that now so you see that diverts the gate up the top there we go and then if i wanted to shed a sheep that way very simple shed the next sheep that way i can do everything from this handle here i really like that thing i really like it but the problem is this thing's stuck on the side of the race when you're coming down with your backpack on and you're you're, you're drenching pipes are inclined to get caught on it that's the, that's the only that's the only downside i have to that bit but it is very useful for drafting and if you weren't using it you can actually take it all off it all unhooks off and sits down out of the way so we're trying to be as gentle as possible so we have a bucket of uh, the famous ration here just going to rattle this this will call them down they can come down at their own pace and keep the stress on them to a minimum come on 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 Come on. Come on. The sheep were on this paddock here, we're on at the minute last. They were fairly well eaten, so just get them back onto this nice lush bit. So this is the last bit of grazing for this farmer. Uh, it was pretty nice grass now. So these sheep, they're getting no meal. They're four weeks out from lambing. They're just on grass, no meal, no lick buckets. Just that mineral drench they're getting at the minute. That's it, that's all they're getting. So they're getting plenty of nutrition from this grass. You see it there. So if it stays dry, we should get another week here or thereabouts. Come on, come on. this doll hard to beat an old pet so that's it they're all drenched so we're going to head off now and get something to eat it's lunchtime or after it uh so we're going to get something to eat 
and then we're going to move across. Well, we have to gather the race. That's the next job. We're going to gather the race, and then we're moving across to the other batch, about 140 in that or so. So we have to move them. They are coming off another farmer that's eaten. So we're moving them. We've a bit of a walk with them, but we'll see if we can get a bit of health gathered up. We have to move them out across the road and down a bit. But we'll get to that next and catch up with you in a bit. So anyone that's interested here, I'm just going to give you a look at how the race loads up. So it kind of lays flat on the ground there, but to get the wheels, you see the wheels are um, lying, the wheels are taken off the machine basically. So this, I'll just give you a look at how the, how the winch is used to uh, gather it all back up again. I'll get Robbie to hold the camera here and I'll show you. So the winch just, um, it, it lifts up the entire race system. It's quite a good idea. So once you get it up, get your wheel. Get your pin in here. And the same the other side. You just let it back down on the wheels now with the winch. Now, oh, that's it. Lovely. Come on, Roberto. We're just over with this other batch of sheep. Bit of a move to do with these, but it's, the field is eaten, the sheep need to come off it. So what I plan to do is walk them back home. Now I could walk them down the main road, just too dangerous. So what I'm gonna do is walk them out across those flat uh, low-lying fields there, over to that house over there, and down that road, and we're going down, it's actually over there to them two white houses. So it's a bit of a roundabout way um, it's a little bit of a walk for the sheep. The four weeks out from lambing, it's probably not ideal, but you look, we'll just take our time. We're no panic. Uh, so we'll get the moving. So we're moving across a couple of farmers, bits of ground here. Uh, and thankfully they've given me permission to do this. Um, otherwise it'd be a good bit of trailer and work. So I'm gonna give these sheep a bad habit. And they probably have one already, but you'll see there's a hole in the hedge here. I'm going to, I'm going to convince them to come out this hole after me. Now, that's the wire held up. The sheep are keen. They're ready to come. Got me bucket of meal. Give it a wee rattle. They're pretty keen to come and follow me, so. Out through this hole in the hedge. Come on. No trouble getting them out. Probably wouldn't recommend that to everyone now. Um given these sheep bad habits, but fit to figure out how to break out themselves. So we'll keep moving. We're just gonna head across to, there's another wee gap down here. All right, all right. So here's my opening here. It's just a bit of a bank. I hope they didn't follow me through here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. There we go. Come on, come on.
Now, so we've come from that white field up there into the next one, down all these bottoms, cross onto this road, and now we're just going to make our way. We're about half a kilometre or so up to my pen. So we're just moving along nicely here. Good man Bobby. But well, this little man Bobby, my little nephew is just standing on this wide part. Come on Bobby, how are you? Good. Are you happy? Yeah. Anything to say for us? Welcome to Sheep School. Come on Bobby. That's the boy. Thank you for helping. So we're nearly there now. It was sweat up now moving these. Right, into the pen. This is the pen we had in the second video of the old lamb. So we're just going to make use of this one. Hold on, hold on. Stride a bit, it's not too bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So there we are, that's them all in. About 20 minutes of a walk. No major toll on them, they look, they're pretty fit, they're pretty, pretty healthy. They've been out all winter, so yeah, they look fine. So we'll get the pen set up and rattle through this bit of dosing before daylight beats us. So this is a different handling facility. This is the semi-permanent one I have on this other piece of ground. So rather than bring the other one, we packed the other one all up, parked it up at home, so we walk the sheep down to here because they're coming to here for a few days anyway. So it's handier. We just use this simple system here. Uh, there are only two eight foot panels. So we've all our sheep gathered in there. Robbie's very keen. He's mad to go. That's known. And uh, we've all packed in. They're no worse from where after a bit of a journey down the road. So we've the three jobs to do again. We've the vaccination fluke dose and the mineral drench as well so we make a bust. Now that's it, last batch out. Let these go. Well now that's all done. I'm going to let these on to uh, this next field. I had planned to let them over to another bit of grass of my own before they headed for home. But the slurry contractors came today. I had a dairy farmer exporting cattle slurry to me. So they've spread that now with the dribble bar. So I can't really put the sheep on it. It's just freshly spread. So I'm not going to. I'm going to put them on this field. Uh, there has been sheep on it, but it'll do them for a day or two until I get them moved on. So, just going down now, going to get these, uh, going to get them moved out this gap here. Just open this gate, let them on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So that's it, that's 304 sheep done today. I will definitely sleep tonight, uh, but it's great to have everything done. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a like, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Now you'll see, I hope there wasn't much noise when we're filming. These men were working just behind me here today. So they're spreading story on my fields. So it's a decent setup, to dump the class. Three and a half thousand gallon tanker. That is a tanker. It's a monster. So it's, a, it's the pipe system again. 
the umbilical pipe system is working. I'll just show you that here now. So it's the umbilical pipe system again. So they are spreading all my fields here. So it's a dairy farmer. Uh, it's a little bit overstocked. So this nitrates job is working in my favour. This new European directive where they have to export some of their slurry. So I can import it because I'm a less intensive type of a farmer. So rather than spreading artificial fertilizer, same story as the pig slurry, I can import this cattle slurry. So this will get my grass growing. So here's the other end of the pipe. Uh, the contractor is just here spreading this cattle slurry. We're working away. This field actually was reseeded. I had planned to let that batch of yews out on this, but I can't really now for, I don't know how long, I'll have to wait for a good shower rain to wash this slurry off. There's a nice bit of grass on this, so they're not too bad where they are for a week or so, but this man is working away here. It's great to get this slurry out. This will push my grass on ready for spring. It's a funny one, there was an old saying, but there was muck, there was money. When you look at the equipment here, there's a lot of money's worth. It has to be money and spreading slurry. That's all I'd say. Overnight. <laughs>